Yo ho ho, so today I have a second hand book haul for you. Most of these I picked up in charity shops over the past couple of months, and then two I picked up from my favourite used bookstore because I got that store credit, son. Let's get into it. The first book I picked up is Fingersmith by Sarah Waters. Now, I've heard plenty of people talk about this on here, however, it has failed to spark my interest until I read Bowie's 100 book recommendations list, and this was in the top 10, I believe. So basically, I was like, if it's good enough for Bowie, it's good enough for me. I will leave that list below if you want to have a gander at it. But it is set in London, 1862, orphans, thieves. We'll see. I'll let you know how it goes. Then in another charity shop, I picked up a book that I wouldn't normally pick up. I'm trying to do this thing where I read more books outside of my comfort zone and it's kind of odd because my comfort zone is generally where everyone else's comfort zone ends. I, I'm kind of trying to pick up books that I would dismiss as kind of sounding dull or boring and this is one of them. <laughs> it is Stoner by John Williams. The, the back just it sounds quite dull to me and it's got very cliche quotes on it so like the New York Times have said Stoner is a perfect novel so so well told and beautifully written, so deeply moving that it takes your breath away. And then it's got this horrible quote on the front that says, the greatest novel you've never read. It's just like, fuck off, you don't know me like that. You don't know my taste, you don't know where I've been. So I'm already kind of enraged at that, but I'm, I'm constantly seeing people rave about it. So maybe it'll be one of those books that will change my life, but probably not. But I'll let you know. And then on that same outing in that same shop I picked up Sula by Toni Morrison because I want to read all of Toni Morrison's books ever written. Then in that same charity shop a few weeks later they had a book sale and generally when charity shops have book sales it's because they've got too many damn coffee table books and that's exactly what this book sale was. It was just like a table full of coffee table books. So all books, all paperbacks were 50 cent and I picked up The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. This has, or at the time, I, before I stumbled across it in a charity shop, I had tried to get it out of the library but it had 37 holes on it because it's been turned into a movie and you know how tacky people are that they have to read the book before they see the movie. Oh, I hate the general public. But anyway, I thought it was just about mental health and a dysfunctional family, but I'm interested to see how it goes because, well, one, I love memoir, so I'm probably, I probably will end up really liking this, but um, I don't think I've really read much about dysfunctional family, so again, I'll let you know. And then I got, again for 50 cent, was Naoko by Kigo Hagashino, which is an author I have already read, but I was kind of unaware at the time. Like, I recognised the author's name and I was like, hmm. And it turns out I have read some of his stuff before. I've read The Devotion of Suspect X, and that was, I thought that was grand at the time. It was a thriller that did exactly what it said on the tin, but this is a mystery, black comedy slash mystery, but I, I guess it's about a family or a man whose life is thrown into turmoil once there's like a horrible bus accident. It's very rare that you find like Japanese books in charity shops, at least for me it is, so I'll snap it up. A couple of weeks ago I found High Fidelity by Nick Hornby. I have wanted to read this for ages, it's like one of my favourite films, and I read it there, I finished it a couple of days ago. It's pretty, like, I think it's one of those books that I prefer the movie of versus the book, which is but it might just be because I just love the movie so much. I could say that by watching the movie you aren't really missing much from the book. It's it's pretty accurate. But I liked it. Like I thought it was I thought it was grand. Um the only weird thing was that it's set in England rather than uh America. I also picked up Tell All by Chuck Palahniuk. Now, like I've I haven't seen great reviews of this. Basically, it's about a woman who's the carer of an old aging like Hollywood starlet and then some chap turns up at the blue and causes some trouble and, and things like that. I don't know whether it's because people keep wanting, now this is like one of my major pet peeves when it comes to certain authors like Brett Easton Ellis is another one where people seem to want the authors to write the same book over and over again so people will always say like oh it's no fight club, oh it's no this, it's no that and it's like do you know how boring it would be if authors kept writing the same type of book over and over and over again. Yeah I'm not, I mean I'm not, I'm not uh, really like inspired to pick this up at the moment because I'm not particularly Jones and to read any Chuck 
at the minute, but when the craving comes, I'll I'll give this a go and I'll give you an honest review of it. But yeah, this is a nice hardback edition, first edition, and like I only got it for a euro, so I was like, mm. then this is so peculiar. <laughs> I never really buy children's books at all, but I have been looking for this book for years. I used to have it. It was one of my favorite books when I was little and I think my one fell apart eventually but I always vividly remember it, an image from this and I freaking found it and I couldn't believe it it was just sitting out in the, in the children's section just out on the shelf displayed and I was like oh. and it is so now you can read the Snow Queen <laughs> and it's like yes now I can read the Snow Queen because it was always read to me because I was an illiterate and this is the image I'm talking about Bam! I remember this so vividly and actually I was flipping through it and it's like the font in it is huge. It's just like I've, I've talked about this before, I have a very big emotional hole in me that I need to fill with things that I had as a child so I, I couldn't believe this. This was like the holy grail of finds for me. A couple of days ago I was in, most of these books are actually from the same charity shop and most of them look brand new but I was in said charity shop and I found Oxford edition of The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Now okay I know how people on book you are okay this isn't the most attractive cover but it was a euro and it is what is between the pages that matter so I'm not really shallow because when it comes to just you know it's just it's a book and I'm gonna enjoy it and I've never read any Oscar Wilde and it's a shame because I'm Irish and I need to read more classic Irish authors otherwise I'm gonna be exiled from the Emerald Isle then I was super jazzed about this because I found it right next to Oscar Wilde Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte the Penguin English Library edition but again Again, like looks absolutely brand new and the woman who was checking me out was like oh my god this came in yesterday and I was wondering who was gonna buy it because it's my favorite book ever and I told her that I'd never read it before and she was like oh I hope you really enjoy it she was, and she was just like really it's nice when you find someone who is really jazzed about what book you're getting and has read it and are raving about it but I'll have to report back to her once I finish this on to the books that I bought in the secondhand bookstore which I didn't really buy because I and store credit so it's not like I'm using real money so technically these are free books. So first I got White Oleander by Janet Fitch. Is this mental healthy? Is this a memoir? I could have sworn this is a memoir. Is this not a memoir? I don't know if this is a memoir or not. I thought this was a memoir but I can't freaking see for the life of me if there's anything on here. That Chosen by Oprah Winfrey for her book club. That does not help me in the least. I think I'm gonna like it from what I've heard other people describe it as um, I'm very confused. Now, the final book is The Secret History by Donna Tarsh. I'm, I'm currently reading this, if you could not tell by my little bookmark. This is um, a book that I, again, it's a book that I didn't really have much interest in reading. I've heard a few people, just a few people, talk about it on here. I don't know if it's like people that are really just shit at describing books or kind of shitty at getting me at least enthusiastic about reading certain books. But um, it wasn't until I saw Daisy Lola's video on binge reads, or I'm not remembering that cor title correctly, whatever, I'll leave it below, where she really just like lit a fire under my ass to check this book out. And so far so good, I think I'm only like 50 pages in. Yeah, I'm only 50 pages in so far, and from what I can tell is that there's going to be a murder. The Greek aspect kind of interests me. I only know a little bit of Greek. I know two little dicky birds in Greek. <coughs> I think that's it. I'm sorry Greek people if I butchered that but I was taught it when I was seven years old. 